think uh, the byproduct of a good coaching is produce a self-aware player and a self-aware team, I suppose. But if we look at the self-aware player, I go back to the phrase, if it is to be, it is up to me. You know, how can I, what can I? You know, we want um, independent thinkers. We want people who make their own decisions, not needy. And um, we talk about learned helplessness. If we don't want learned helplessness, when the pressure's on, we want them turning and looking to you. We want them making up their own minds and their own decisions. And I think the environment we surround them with over time will create a more self-aware player and the tools we, we equip them with. So the language we use, um, how we can keep revolving around this, the words that are bringing them back to themselves are really important. The cues of, of coaching. Uh, and then the tools, look at, you know, there's loads of tools we can use to, to raise self-awareness in a player. We do simple things like captain's exercise, so they might play for 20 minutes, t uh, 10 minutes, a half, and at half time the captain will lead a set of predetermined exercises, or predetermined questions, and they discuss them. Now we're not just saying, go over there and have chat lads, we're saying, here's a tool, use it. You know, so we're giving them the, the frame to climb up on, I suppose, really, and to bring them to higher levels. It's that, what Vygotsky called the zone of proximal development, which is where they are compared to where they could be with the scaffolding provided by what he talked about, a learned other, and the coaches are learned other, so they're trying to provide them that framework. Then, other ways as, as they develop through to, to, for self-awareness is things like scenarios. So you could say, we're going to play four, five-minute section, guys. There's going to be four scenarios you're going to have to deal here are the scenarios come back to me figure it out come back to me in five minutes tell me the order you're going to play these scenarios in the both teams play each other using different scenarios so it could be you had the scenarios could be playing with a man down playing with a sweeper every score is or every foul is a 21 meter or penalty uh, every score is worth double so they'd be the four scenarios they play through the opposition won't know what scenarios we're playing in and um, they're playing against so they have to communicate, talk, it's the challenges, and they have to figure the way out through it. Now, the more I tell, the less they need to learn, because I'm gonna keep telling. So I need to solve problems, but also, pose problems, but also provide, you know, that bit of a scaffolding for them. So I think that the, the, the way we coach creates a self-aware learner at the end of it. The language we use, an awful lot of this is rooted in Carl Dweck stuff about how we talk about learning and improvement, the language we use around it, um, about effort and resilience and strategy. And if we provide them with, I, I always say, you know, it, it, it's easy to say these people are really intelligent, but if we don't surround them with intelligence, they become ignorant. So the coach's job is to surround them with intelligence. And again, I suppose some of them will say, a lot of people say, a coach's job is to make themselves progressively less important. So again, that's, more on the self-aware, how can the more self-aware player, the player is, the less of the coaching he needs. But he does need coaching, you know, standoff coaching isn't the answer either. The game alone isn't just the teacher. We are there to provide the intelligence and tell the truth and drive the standards and provide um, logic behind these things. So that's the self-aware player. And what I want every player to say under my care is if it is to be, it is up to me. And I'm trying to figure that out to this day and probably always, so that's it.